In this video, we'll be talking about the growth hormone. We would be talking about the physiology, the cell biology, the molecular effect and the system level effect of growth hormone. So stay tuned till the end. So let's talk about the secretion of growth hormone first. Growth hormone or somatotrophin is actually secreted from the anterior part of the pituitary gland. So let's say we cut a cross section of the anterior part of the pituitary, we would be seeing different zone and they, they are named as thyrotrops, somatotrops, corticotrops, lactotrops, gonadotrops, etc. Among them, somatotroph is the region which secretes the growth hormone or somatotropin. So this is a peptide type of hormone and it acts via specific receptors in many cells. We would talk about that in a bit more details. So here we can see the growth hormone is secreted in a pulsatile fashion. What do I mean by that? That means if we look at the secretion profile, the peak of growth hormone secretion is in every two hours. And it really peaks high when we do exercise or sleep. Just after exercise and sleeping, especially in the uh, early morning time, this growth hormone picks up. Question is, what regulates growth hormone secretion? What are the factors? What are the trigger factors that can lead to the growth hormone secretion? So here are the trigger factors. It turns out when there is hypoglycemia, growth hormone is secreted and growth hormone actually try to raise the blood glucose level. We'll talk about that. Also, elevated estrogen and progesterone is associated with growth hormone secretion. Because, you know, during the puberty, where these hormones are up, like estrogen and, uh, estrogen and testosterone are in elevated level, growth hormone acts optimally at that time. Because our growth majorly happening during puberty. Also, when there is stress, maybe due to a trauma, maybe due to fever, growth hormone secretion increases. Also, there are specific stages of sleep where we can find growth hormone secretion is elevated. So this is growth hormone and it can impart its biological effect at several level. Broadly, it alters metabolism. It also regulates growth and cell division. So these are the three important biological function that is regulated by growth hormone. And it's not always direct. So let's talk about the direct effects. It can literally regulate carbohydrate, protein, and fat metabolism. In terms of carbohydrate metabolism, it has anti-insulin-like effect. That means insulin generally try to reduce the blood glucose level. Growth hormone, on the other hand side, try to increase the blood glucose level. Next, we talk about fat metabolism. It breaks down the fat and it releases the fatty acids in the blood. And adipose in the adipose tissue, it actually triggers lipolysis. When it comes to protein metabolism, it has strong anabolic effect. It increases the amount of protein production and replacing uh, and basically growth of the muscles. So these are all direct effects. Now there are also indirect effects. An indirect effect is actually triggered by a protein secreted by the liver upon growth hormone uh, action and that is IGF-1. IGF-1 can regulate cell metabolism, growth and division, all these aspects in an indirect fashion. But IGF-1 mediated by growth hormone is a key trigger in this entire process. Okay, another way by which growth hormone can regulate metabolism is by modulating th thyroid hormone uh, availability in the blood. In earlier video, we talked about why th thyroid hormone is so important in context of body's metabolism, right? So this is the thyroid gland. You can see in the in, in the thyroid follicle, there are thyroglobulin, which would be eventually secreted into the blood. So T3 and T4 are the hormones which are getting secreted into the blood. Now, there are specific proteins known as mammalian specific TBG or thyroid binding protein. So this would bind and uh, take them to the specific uh, organ of choice where it should work. So it turns out that the growth hormone regulates thyroid hormone availability by producing more and more of these TBG protein, which is, acts like a thyroid hormone carrier. So this is how it regulates the metabolism. Now let's talk about the uh, multi-organ effect of growth hormone. So just to quickly recap, it can act on adipose tissue, it 
basically increases the lipogenesis, which is now wrongly presented. So, so it decreases the lipogenesis and increases the lipolysis. So it breaks down fat simply and basically stop producing new fat. In liver, it increases gluconeogenesis. That means it, it can take other sources and make it glucose, like it would convert amino acids into glucose. It would also enhance the gl uh, glycogenolysis. That means breaking down glycogen into glucose. Moral of the story, it would basically trigger more glucose level in the blood, an action which is very opposite to insulin. Then in the muscle, it would create hypertrophy by replacing, uh, by basically in synthesizing new protein, repla replacing specific isoform of the uh, muscle myosin with another one, and it would prevent the chances of atrophy. Then in the bones also, it has strong anabolic effect. It increases osteogenesis, chondrogenesis, and it increases bone density as well as bone length. Now, given that so many important function growth hormone plays, it's important to understand its tight regulation. Before that, we should understand how at molecular level it works. So generally, a key uh, mediator of growth hormones effect is via IGF-1 uh, receptor. So this IGF-R1 receptor binds to IGF and triggers insulin receptor-like substrate. Also, it can regulate the components of MAP kinase pathway. Ultimately, it activates PI3 kinase, which activates AKT and mTOR pathway. Now, mTOR pathway uh, triggers phosphase-6K, which lead to transcription of genes which regulate growth and proliferation and some sort of like anabolic responses. It's also important to understand that mTOR signaling pathway is highly, highly studied in context of cellular growth. So one of the way by which Growth hormones trigger growth is via the mTOR pathway mediated by IGF-1. Also, it can trigger HRAS, KRAS, NRAS and triggers the uh, standard MAP kinase pathway. And this MAP kinase pathway is another pathway implicated in growth survival proliferation. So this is how the effect of growth hormone is imparted in the molecular level. Now let's talk about the stringent regulation. It turns out there are three-way loops three-way feedback loops that triggers and controls how much of growth hormone action would be uh, there in that particular system. So growth hormone is secreted by the anterior pituitary. Growth hormone can positively regulate bone and muscle growth. It can trigger the liver to secrete several proteins. Okay, when there is too much of growth hormone, what would, ha uh, what would happen is <coughs> certain inhibitory factor would be secreted from the liver. But let me tell you, growth hormone secretion is also regulated by GHRH, which is growth hormone releasing hormone secreted by the hypothalamus. So more GHRH, more GH and more effect, anabolic effect on bone muscles, etc. So there is too much of GH. Now what would happen? It would impart a negative feedback loop into the hypothalamus. Also, liver can secrete inhibitory proteins like somatomedin, and somatomedin can now have inhibitory effect on hypothalamus. It's also important to understand hypothalamus can produce somatostatins. And somatostatin can act on pituitary and negatively regulate growth hormone secretion. So now you can understand there is kind of like a three-way negative feedback loop that is acting on uh, the growth hormone secretion. And this is how the growth hormone levels are regulated in the body. But what if this feedback loops, this stringent regulation goes haywire? And it happens in case of some pituitary tumors. So too much of growth hormone lead to a situation called acromegaly, which is like gigantism. Another situation is known as dwarfism, which is due to most of the cases, low production of the growth hormone. In different video, we would be talk more about these diseases and we would talk more about the details. But in this video, we looked at what is growth hormone, where, from where it is secreted, how it is acting at a molecular and cellular level and how its uh, levels are regulated throughout. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.